Hey guys. Uh, you you mad? You mad, brah? No. Okay, good. Cause I have to apologize for a review I did on Munchkin, in which case I was not very clear on the rules of play, um, as much as I could be for a review at, at any cost. So today, this is gonna just be a how to play video, uh, more in depth how to play on Munchkin, just to make sure that it makes so much sense to you. So if you if you want to see the review anyway, because uh, it's a good review regardless. This is a good review regardless. Um, there's gonna be some sort of thing on the screen. Let's go check that out. Check it. 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 So the first thing you want to know about Munchkin is how to win, obviously. <laughs> Die. Basically, each player starts at level 1, and your goal is to reach level 10 before anyone else. Now, how do you get to level 10? There's a couple different ways. You can either A, battle monsters, and each time you win against the monster, you'll receive a level, or two levels sometimes, depending on the monster. If your race is an elf and you happen to be helping someone in combat, you will gain a level. If you sell a thousand gold worth of treasure items on your turn, then you can also gain a level through that. And of course, there's treasure cards that will just give you level ups, no problem. And that's basically as simple as it can get. Now, one important thing to note is that when you reach level 9, then your strategies on how to reach level 10 become diminished. So, for example, if you're level 9, selling a thousand gold worth of your items will no longer work to reach level 10. Level up treasure cards won't work either at level 9. The only things that you can bank on are either helping someone as an elf or battling monsters and winning them. If your class is a cleric and you happen to be level 9 and somebody or yourself draws the card Divine Intervention, then you will go to level 10 and you will win. Yeah, it's cheap, but it's a, it's, a, it's a munchkin. So now we have that out of the way, it's time to get into kind of the meat and potatoes of how the game works. So there are two decks in the game. You have your door deck and your treasure deck. And as I mentioned before, the door deck is where you're going to be doing your dungeon crawling. And the treasure deck is your rewards for doing certain things and, you know, battling monsters mostly. At the start of the game, you'll start with four cards from each deck. Now, you have a hand limit of five cards. So, with a hand of eight cards, you can't obviously hold them all. Um, in terms of treasures, you can choose to, in instead of putting have them in your hand, you can actually choose to have them out in the open for your other for the other players to s to see um, in like a little like, in like a purgatory state, I guess you could call it. Or if you don't want someone to see a specific treasure, then you can actually hide it into your hand. But however, the ha the hand limit will still apply um, to that to that person's hand. So now, how do we build our character? There are multiple different races and classes to choose from in the deck. If the card in your hand has the word race or class on it, it can actually be used to build your character. You can equip one race card and one class card at a time, with exceptions like Super Munchkin or Half Breed, which allows you to have two of those types. Um, it's usually just one for one. So one race, one class. And each class and each race will have a special power-up that will aid you in battle or uh, give you bonuses in if you discard certain amounts of cards uh, on, a, on a battle phase or whatever. In your treasure collection, some cards are going to have plus bonuses on the top of the card, which will indicate how much additional power you're going to be getting inside a battle. Now, obviously, when you're fighting a monster, you're going to be fighting. You start by fighting with your base level. So at level one... You can only win battles if the monster is less than level 1. So obviously, you need bonuses to allow you to excel in battle. So these plus bonuses will take effect during battle. So they won't count in your overall win score. However, they give you enough bonus to you know pummel through enemies. So equipping these, these treasures will, will give you the... The stuff that you want. However, you can't unequip them and put them back into your bay. If you decide to unequip them or exchange for another card, then that that card that was previously equipped will go into the discards. 
Now, what's really important to understand is you can't just equip any treasure card that has bonuses on it. At the base level, you have two hands, so you can only carry items that will either have no hand limit on it or just say one hand or one hand. But if you carry an item that says two hands, then you can't carry any items that say one hand because you already are using two hands to carry that weapon, if you think of it in that sort of aspect. You can't carry more than one big item at a time, unless of course you have, there's, there are going to be treasure cards that will grant you exceptions to these rules, but at the base level, you can't carry more than one big item at a time. So, you're, so you are limited. And also certain bonus cards will tell you that you have to be a certain race or a certain class to uh, actually use it. So that's also something to take into effect. So now we have an understanding of how your character is going to look and how to uh, buff your character up. We can get into how to actually play. So on your first phase, you're going to draw from the door deck, which is called kicking down the door. So you draw and you immediately resolve the effect of the card that was drawn. If it's like a class card or a utility card of some kind, all, the, all of the players get to see what it is and then you just put it into your hand. However, if it's a curse card, the curse will take immediate effect and you have to do resolve whatever the curse tells you to do. If it's a monster, then you will be forced to battle it. If you didn't draw a monster on your first draw, then you can do then you can additionally do one of two things after you drew the first card. You can either A, loot the room, which means you can draw a new card into your hand and if it's a curse or whatever, it won't take effect. This is just a card that you're going to collect into your hand to, for later use. Or you can choose to look for trouble. So if you have a monster card in your hand that you know that you can beat, then you can, and choo you can choose to just look for trouble and battle the monster from your hand, essentially. And winning the battle will always give you the level and give you the treasure. So uh, it, it's, it's, it's worth it in a lot of aspects if you haven't been battling in a while. If you have drawn a monster then the phase will end once the monster is resolved. So there won't be any looting the room or uh, looking for trouble in, in this sort of scenario. Battling a monster is very simple. If you are at least one level higher than the monster in play, then you can beat the monster. However, if you are a warrior class, then the warrior will win ties in battle. So that's like that's uh, one, of the ex one of the exceptions I'm talking about. Upon beating the monster, you will receive one level up as well as the treasure listed on the monster card itself. So some monsters will offer one treasure, some two, some four. It depends. But you collect the treasure from it and uh, your turn ends. If you are in a situation where you are going to lose against the monster, then you take the runaway dice and you try to run away from the battle. If you roll a five or a six, then you successfully run away. Uh, this is minus any dice bonuses that you might have collected during the game. If your roll succeeded, then your turn's over and you get nothing from the battle. If your roll failed, then you must do whatever the bad stuff is on the card. The bad stuff is listed on the monster card and there's various things that will happen in the bad stuff. Sometimes it's like losing items, going down a level, or there's, there's multiple different variables. If the bad stuff says death, then what happens is you discard your entire hand of cards and you get rid of all your treasure. And then on your next turn, you will draw four new cards and four new treasures as if you were starting a new game from scratch. However, you do not lose any levels for this. You still have a chance to actually win the game, even upon death. And uh, I know I know plenty of people that have screwed up this, this concept where it's like, oh, you're back to level one. No, no, no. You don't lose any levels. You just lose your cards, basically. Now, in a battle, can you intervene? Absolutely. If someone's in a battle and they're about to win and you don't want them to win, you can start throwing cards from your hand or even treasure cards into play in order to make the battle harder for that opponent. And there's plenty of cards on the base game deck where you can screw with your opponent. Like I mentioned in the last review, it's all about reading your cards. I'm pretty sure I mentioned this last review as well, but just to reiterate, you can use curse cards at any time from your hand. So if you just feel like screwing around with an opponent or he's that opponent's very far ahead or whatever, you can use your curse cards at any time. You don't have to wait till your turn. You can just play the curse card and be like, boop, you screwed, biatch. In a losing situation in a battle, you can ask one of your opponents to help you and that opponent can generate terms of negotiation in order to kind of get what they want, either 
saying, well, I'll help you for one of one or more of the treasures that that monster is offering or stuff like I want to take the treasure from your pile or whatever. There's plenty of ways to kind of negotiate in this game. However, helping helping out the player also means joining the battle. So if you join the battle and somehow the battle is lost, if other opponents were throwing in cards to try and screw both of you guys over, then the person helping will also have to do the bad stuff or try to run away. A big card in this game is called Wandering Monster. So during a battle, uh, a player can throw down Wandering Monster and enter a monster from their hand into someone else's battle. In a situation where you're fighting multiple monsters at once, you have to fight them individually. And if you lose to both of them, you do both of their bad stuffs. Bad stuffs. But if you manage to eliminate one and lose to the other, you don't get the benefits of the one you eliminated. Only if you have won both of them over. So there you go. A little bit of a crash course into how to play Munchkin. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope that um, it, it, it's more clear to you now. It makes more sense. Hopefully I don't have to have to do this with other games, you know. <laughs> but yeah, thank you for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe for more. And leave a suggestion. Let me know what you guys want me to talk about, you know. What, what games that you're, you're, you're gunning to see. Gunning to see me talk about. Peace out.